We know you got a busy schedule today. It's a great event, and uh, thanks for taking a few minutes to chat with us. My pleasure, Jeff. Good to talk to you. Good. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, well, uh, so we had, we had I, as I said, a number of different uh, guests on uh, that I had a chance to talk with at that Massachusetts STEM Summit. It was a great event. Uh, yeah. Another one was uh, Miss Susan Bucky, and she's out in Boston and is a partner with us through our uh, STEM network. Let's see if I can call that up. Are we, are we ready if I roll that? Okay, we're here with Susan Bucky, the project manager for the Metro Boston Skills Initiative, and that's Skills, the Skilled Careers in Life Sciences Initiative. Welcome. Thank you very much, Jeff. Tell us a little bit about the Metro Boston Skills Initiative. Well, this is a program that is um, giving opportunities to Massachusetts residents, particularly those in eastern Massachusetts, to be trained and prepared to work in the life sciences industry. And we also have another component of the grant, which is really to um, assess sort of what are the workforce development needs of the industry. Um, so we have a consortium that meets on a quarterly basis to address those questions with both employers, uh, trainers, as well as workforce development agencies all in the room at the same time. And certainly while the program is based in, in Boston, it sounds like that information that you're gathering is really could be shared throughout the state. Yes. Yeah, I think a lot of what we're learning is uh, proving to be very useful to anyone who's interested in this industry. And is that what you're talking about uh, at today's summit? Um, yeah, a little bit. Um, today we were um, we had a summit where we had graduates from different certificate programs um, in from a bunch of different schools across the state. Talking, um, those graduates were telling us their story about how they came to the life sciences industry, um, where they've landed after being participating in this uh, certificate program, and the career path that they see for themselves going forward from this point in time. And it's a pretty uh, positive looking future. Well, it sounds like it was a great uh, workshop session. So, thank you again for being with us. Oh, that was short. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you caught the ending of that. I think she thought yeah. she was like a featured. Yeah, she wanted to go. Uh, she, she was ready she to go for like a 15 or you. 20 minute interview. And I had to. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, she thought that was a bit shorter than she had uh, anticipated, I guess. Uh, so that was yeah, pretty funny. Yeah. So, and the, the last one is um, this. Uh, did an interview uh, is with uh, Lance Hartford. Can you think of a better? Isn't that great a name? Cool name. That's so a great name. Let's see if I can get this uh, to play, and we'll go with uh, we'll go with this quick interview. It's just another couple minutes here. We're here at the Massachusetts STEM Summit with Lance Hartford, Executive Director of the Mass Bio Ed. Uh, tell us, Lance, uh, about uh, your involvement with STEM and and why you're here today. I run an education foundation, Mass Bioed Foundation, and it is really about uh, promoting biotechnology education so that we make sure that the workforce is there as biotechnology companies uh, continue to grow in Massachusetts. Uh, and obviously, there's a lot of uh, like-minded folks here today, a lot of education, uh, educational programs, school systems, uh, workforce development uh, programs involved. Are, are, do you tend to do you partner up with those organizations? Do they serve as a feeder for you? Or? We do partner up with those organizations, but uh, our flagship program is a program called BioTeach, where we do professional development for high school teachers and give grants to, school, to high schools so that they can get students and teachers really uh, cognizant of what's going on in the life science world. And I imagine that the teachers learning that can bring those lessons back to their classroom firsthand. And that's, that's the concept, is that we teach them in the labs, and then they teach it to the students. And then in addition, we give them experiential opportunities so that we take uh, students on field trips, do job shadow days at life science companies, uh, and also take them to colleges so that they can see what college labs are like. Now, so it's really a, a fairly inclusive uh, project that we've got going. We're in... Uh, 180 different high schools across the state. Do school districts apply to be a part of it, or do individual there... schools apply? Individual high schools apply uh, for funding for the grants, and then the only stipulation is that we do professional development with those grants. So it's not just for equipment; it's equipment and professional development. Do you know off the top of your head if there's any Central Mass schools that uh, that you oh, work yeah. with? Or? Yeah, I don't know specifically the schools, but we're in 180 different high schools across so, the yeah. state, so we're we're doing pretty well at getting out west. Uh, way out west, there's 
there's fewer because there's fewer life science companies out there. But certainly, Worcester area, we have a lot of schools in Worcester. Sure. Now, how about um, in terms of the size of the industry and the growth of the industry? Can you comment on on kind of maybe where it's headed or? Yeah, the industry's grown an awful lot over the last uh, 10 years. The last couple of years have uh, flattened out some, but there's a continuing demand for uh, jobs within the sector at all levels, uh, both for entry-level jobs and also, obviously, at the high end of academic uh, accomplishment, scientists, uh, PhDs, always looking for people like that. Well, Lance Hartford, Executive Director of the Mass Bio Ed Foundation, thanks for being with us today. Pleasure. I think it, we're ready to go uh, to pivot now to change over from the STEM Summit, which was a great event, over to another feature, standing feature here in the show we like to call Mailbag, right? Right. Mail time? Run it. What do we call it? Are right, we ready? Mail time. Mail time. Mail time. Mail time. Okay. Wow, that's, that's an intro right there. <laughs> if ever there was one. Merrill time. Okay, sir, take so, it away. So we have uh, an email from, oh, as always uh, for the show, if, if we have um, questions from our listeners or our viewers, we ask them to send us uh, an email. Bob, do we have the email? Is it is it theworkinglunch at wcuw.org? Yes. <laughs> so we have, we have an email from Jessica from Oxford. And Jessica writes, hey, Working Lunch crew, I wanted to see if you had any advice for job searching during the holidays. So we've got a number of holidays coming up. We have Thanksgiving, Christmas, mm -hmm. Hanukkah. The list goes on and, and on. If she hasn't already uh, uh, gotten a job, I mean, she, really, for seasonal work, you know, they've already pretty much hired folks. But um, it may not be too late. There may be some folks that are still hiring out there. A lot of retail shops hire. Right. So, uh, UPS yeah. hires uh, extensively. FedEx and, and, you know, transportation distribution warehousing is also another big industry that hires very heavily during the holidays. So yeah. what other advice yeah. would you? So, so I talked to uh, Amy Mosier from our office, and she mm -hmm. pointed me to a couple articles from Allison Doyle uh, that she found online. And, you know, what first occurred to me was a lot of the uh, higher level decision makers might be on vacation. So mm -hmm. there, there might be like a lag in when they get back to you or when they post for a job. Mm -hmm. um, but the uh, this article kind of says you got to just keep going with it. It's a good time to keep to keep uh, going with your job search, to send out resumes, to connect with the Career Center. Um, and then there's six tips here that she highlighted for me. Six tips. So the first Number one we just went over was was don't slow down your job search. Uh, some people give up job searching during Thanksgiving and New Year's. Don't be one of them. Employers are still hiring, and there may be less competition from other job seekers at this time of year. Good point. Use the downtime. So a lot of people, um, it's an ideal time of the year to connect with acquaintances you haven't been in touch with and let them know that you're looking for work. Mm -hmm. Uh, use perf personal and professional events. So these are great events where you can do some networking and connect with other people who may know of a job that might be there good you for go. you. There you go. You're or, out and about. You know, you're meeting people. You're, you're talking to people. Uh, send holiday cards. Sending a happy holidays or happy new year card um, is a great way to reconnect with your networking contacts. Connect good online. Point. Uh, again, kind of the same thing with the holiday card is you can connect with somebody, say happy holidays. You know, it's a good way to kind of reintroduce or, or reconnect with someone just to kind of say, hey, here's my situation now. That makes sense. And the last tip here, my favorite, relax and enjoy. So enjoy the hol holiday time, mm -hmm. kind of relax, come back down to earth. Uh, I know stress can be... At, being unemployed and right. looking forward can be very stressful. So this is a time where you can... On a, on a personal level, yeah. not necessarily with job search, but... You know, obviously, it, it can be a stressful time with um, with the holidays and everything. I think it's an opportunity. Uh, you know, money's going to be tight. Um, to be creative with gift giving too. Oh. You know, whether it's uh, you know, you <laughs> might um, you know. Do you have some ideas for our listeners? Well, and, and I don't have anything yes. prepared. I, I wish I thought of it. I would have prepared something. But I mean, thinking you know, yes. you could give a gift certificate for an hour of your yep. time to to go oh, and rake yeah. leaves. And this or, coming or Saturday is shop local. Shop oh, local that's right. day. That's yes. right. So. It could be little knickknacks. There's all kind of little Nick shops all around. Little knickknacks and stuff. Knickknacks, yes. But you can also, I mean, you can make gifts. You can you can um, create your own gifts. And not that you don't want to shop local. You can shop local for the craft supplies that you use That's to make right. your gifts. I mean, I know um, my uh, my my grandmother used to knit mittens for me. My mom's actually. I've yeah. requested my mom knit me some uh, slippers for slippers for Christmas. Yeah. We call what do we Anna call slip-ons? I think we call them slip-ons. 
Because <laughs> you keep <laughs> all I, on. I guess slip right. on your feet. I don't know. You know. No, but that, that's a shoe putts. I think we call them shoe putts. <laughs> why? I don't know why. Is that like a French Canadian thing? Yeah. I don't. We know. had a lot of kind of interesting. With a name kinda, like Zukowski. Yeah, yeah, you would know about that. No, <laughs> so you, know. so the, so the Polish tradition is not to call these slippers shoe putts. No, not at all. You bet your dupe I got a shoe putt. That's what I say. <laughs> John, how about you? <laughs> and call them slippers. <laughs> just slippers. They were like knitted slippers. Yeah, exactly. They're great. Really warm, made of wool, perfect. So. Mm. Great point, though. Uh, About making it, yeah. Y- yep, stay back. Because <coughs> money is going to be tight. But I do I do appreciate the uh, the other points there, especially, like you said, to um, you know not lose sight of the fact that you know it is a holiday time and, and you should try to enjoy your family and, and friends. So Definitely. And thanks to Jessica from Oxford for the email. And, again, listeners and viewers, if you have questions that you'd like the, the staff at uh, Workforce Central or the staff here at the Central Mass Workforce Investment Board to answer, uh, send them over to us and uh, – it's the working lunch at wcw.org. So one of the things that we've tried to do this month, there's so much going on um, between the STEM summit, the volunteer connection. We have the upcoming, uh, the upcoming volunteer connection. The upcoming, we talked to, to Pat, the upcoming uh, event over at the library with uh, inequality. Um, we also had talked about volunteerism, and so we we had kind of a really busy show today, but we did have one other event that we wanted to highlight, the good work uh, the folks at Workforce Central and and uh, career centers across the state actually had teamed up to um, to help with a veterans-focused job fair. And so that was a great opportunity um, to serve our veterans, to, to get them, help reconnect them to the uh, to the workplace and to connect them with, uh, with companies out there that were looking to hire veterans and the skills that, of course, they bring. So we did have a short interview with Larry Corbin, who... Um, is one of the uh, the organizers of the event. Let me go ahead and play that. Bob, you ready for this, Dr. Z? Here we go. Okay, we're here with Larry Corbin, the uh, Disabled Veterans Outreach Program Coordinator, uh, stationed over at Workforce Central. Larry, thanks for uh, taking the time to chat with us here. Thanks for coming in and asking. So we're here at the Veterans uh, Job Fair. Can you tell us a little bit about the event? Yes, we plan this every year. This is our fifth year here at the Auburn Hills. Um, we have 39 employers and quite a good turnout. Uh, it takes about six months to organize, plan, and um, you know, finally get it all together. But it's an extremely well-attended event uh, every year, and it's really good to see a lot of people coming in. And I know you have a lot of support from uh, not only the, the staff at Workforce Central, uh, but also a lot of employers here. Uh, can you speak to maybe uh, the employers and their um, desire to connect with returning veterans and what veterans kind of bring to the to their organizations? The veterans bring um, to all of the people a sense of urgency, responsibility, commitment, that kind of stuff. They're very trustworthy, um, and they have the skills that the companies look for, and they don't have to train them or retrain them. And we we have a lot of participation from the companies uh, and a lot of returnees every year. Every year they love to come to this. Well, obviously they, they bring, um, you know, a lot of those skills like you're saying. I mean, uh, you know, the, the experiences that they have, the discipline that they bring. Uh, so it's great to see such support there among the community to, uh, to bring this together. Yeah, Auburn, uh, the Elks, Every year, I can't say enough good things about the Auburn Elks. Uh, they donate the hall to us every year. Um, they they support us with um, uh, anything we need, and you know, giving back into the community. We have people coming from as far west as Springfield, and we have them as far south as um, Milford, and a little bit further down towards Rentham. And that they come up this way. It's an it's a very good draw. Yeah. So it's good for Workforce Central. It's good for the three career centers, which is Southbridge, Milford, and Worcester. But we organize it all together, and it's a complete team effort. And it takes about uh, about six months to get it done. It's also great for our returning vets to have a chance to interact and and talk face-to-face with some employers that recognize the skills that they bring, too, I imagine. Right. Getting getting the veterans in... um, to talk with the employers is the key, because most of the time, the employers are unreachable, 
now they're out front and the, and the veterans have the opportunity to talk directly to them uh, and voice their concerns and their wishes. So it's a win-win situation for them. Great. Well, Larry Corbin, the Disabled Veterans Outreach Program Coordinator, thanks for taking the time. So again, just a great a great effort uh, on behalf of the staff over at Workforce Central to put that on again. Uh, they do that annually mm. uh, during November to uh, to to help serve our, our veterans and, and others come in from the community as well too. And a big event too. I heard there was over five hundred job seekers there. Yeah, close to six hundred job seekers. Did, did um, you mention how many employees? employees uh, were there, do you know yeah, I, or? It, it was over. It was about 40, wow. 40 something yeah. employers. Yeah, so they must so. have p- packed them into that room. Then. Yeah, it's really, it's really, and like he said, the the folks over at the Auburn Elks do a great job. So, so we've come, we 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 kind of come down to the the last few minutes here of the show. I think we've got a, a busy show today. A lot going on, but it is you know a special show given that it's the day <laughs> before yeah. Thanksgiving. Doctor Z, any family traditions for Thanksgiving that you used to? The traditions are always family. It centers all around family. Mm-hmm. So whether we have 18 or whether we have 36 wow. showing up, coming, it depends. I just How about re- in the, now you grew up in a Polish, uh, yeah. traditional kind of Polish It's household. the same thing. It's turkey uh, and all the fixings. Nothing, okay. nothing of Polish dishes. No, no. even side? No, no, no. no. It's Glum all, no, 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 no. It's uh. all. So cool. I just remember the first. Gumkeys, are there such things as gumkeys? Am I right? I just yeah, remember. Right. Yes, you said pierogies. Right. Yeah, oh, you got that right. Good. But I remember the first time hosting the Thanksgiving and having thirty-two people over and having to drive out to Lancaster. And I believe the place was Bob's Turkey Farm, wow. out in Lancaster, and get a thirty-six-pound bird. A thirty-six and pound waking bird. up at one. What do you, what do you, and waking up at 1.30 in the morning and putting it in the oven wow. so it would be ready. Wow. That was a big bird. Yeah. I'm surprised it would fit in the oven. Yeah. We don't have that oven anymore. <laughs> wow. That's a huge. That's so, and they, they you, you bought them from the farm processed and everything? Or yeah. They're, they, they're fresh. You know, they're fresh, not frozen. They're fresh. They're sure. But they yeah. do clean them off and all that. Yeah. Right? You didn't have to. Yes. No, I didn't have to. No. He brought, he brought it in live, <laughs> put it in the car seat. He's in a cage. Has that's, a backyard. That story's for another day. <laughs> How about you, Sean? Any? Uh, I've, I've actually got a similar. Uh, this year, my wife and I are hosting Thanksgiving for the first time. We were, we were kind of tired of driving around all over the state to different, different families family members, yeah. and to, doing the whole thing. So we said, "Hey, why don't we have it this year?" And uh, now we have thirty guests coming over for our first one. And uh, my father and I are starting a new tradition. We're doing the turkey together. We're doing a uh, maple orange bacon turkey. And then we're going to go that for That sounds a, a little exotic. It, well, we're doing an exotic one. I'm not one sure we and can. A traditional we, one. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. We're doing both. For the people that want to try something a little exactly. spicy, something a little different. Sh- yep. And then we're going to do a, uh, a mountain bike as a new tradition. Kind of goes with the mother. Hey, now. Hey. How about a maple? What is it? Maple smoked bacon. Maple orange bacon. Wow. Turkey. How about yourself, Jeff? Where well, I mean, this year we're, we're going over, my wife and I and the three kids, uh, we uh, we live very close to the in-laws, so we go down there. We have kind of a tradition there. Daddy um, daddy, daddy usually goes out the night before to hang out with some <laughs> friends, and then uh, he sleeps in the next morning. Oh. That's like the one day I get to sleep in a bit. Wow. And, uh, and the family uh, has uh, they're a little bit younger kids, so so they'll go down to the in-laws and watch the parade a bit. And where's um, the... Uh, the th- although this year I might be going to... Uh, I've got a nephew, although I went to St. Peter Marion... And I uh, had played football there. And my brother before me had played football there. My brother's son is actually a freshman over at St. John's playing football. So very very talented young football player and lacrosse player. Uh, and so um, we might be, we might be, I might be uh, taking my son, who's eight now and, and you know, kind of into football. I uh, might be taking him out to see the St. Peter Mary and St. John's game. And normally, or, or I should say this year, I would say that the game might be St. John's might be the heavy favorite because they are going to like the state finals. Oh wow! Um, but because they're going to the state finals, I don't know if they're gonna want to rest their their stars, right? Uh, they might want to rest some people, so, it so it might game. give it might give an opening to my alma mater there. So Very good. I, and it got to some torn, some torn. Uh, uh, some, are we, Doctor Z, are we already out of it. time. I I thought we had another. He runs a tight ship here. So. Well, before, well, well, let me end with this. 
a little Garrison Keeler for folks out there. Happy right? Thanksgiving, everybody. We would eat pumpkin pie. We'd be 